In an interview with Fox News Digital, Donald Trump expressed concern over the increased temperature of the country that he helped to raise. Look, I'm not going to say that Donald Trump single-handedly increased the temperature of the country currently with regard to the FBI issue because there's a lot of propagandists on the right who have been doing just that. But Donald Trump, you know, it's really ironic, obviously, for him of all people to say this because when you have this cult of personality surrounding you and you can easily work your voters, your supporters into a frenzy because they support you unconditionally and unwaveringly, then you know what you're doing if you continue to portray yourself as the victim. It doesn't matter what the circumstance is. It could be January 6th. It could be the election that he lost. Regardless, Trump is and always will be the victim. So when you continuously talk to your supporters as if you are the victim and the sky is falling and you're under attack, and now some people like Steve Bannon are claiming that you're under threat of assassination, then it shouldn't be surprising when your deranged followers start doing violence, and that's exactly what we've seen. So we'll talk about what he said, but first, there's a lot that transpired over the weekend when it comes to the FBI raid kerfuffle. So the warrant was unsealed on Friday, and it was quite the bombshell. So we learned that Trump is being investigated for a potential violation of the Espionage Act, and sources for the Washington Post claim that the FBI was looking for nuclear documents, although this hasn't been confirmed yet. But if this is true, this is very, very serious. So serious that people who are aligned with Donald Trump politically, Republicans, they don't really know how to spin this. So as the Rolling Stone reports, they're just kind of uh, like the Homer Simpson meme where he backs up into the bushes because they don't they don't know how to respond to this. There's also a lot of hysteria within Trump's close circle, as they learned last week of a potential mole who gave the FBI information that uh, no one other than really closely aligned Trump people would know. But my favorite part about this story is, after illegally taking classified information to Mar-a-Lago and refusing to comply with subpoenas, well, he was raided by the FBI, and now he has the audacity to say, hey, Bring back some of those documents. Excuse me? Can you imagine just a normal person getting raided by the FBI and then uh, demanding, bring it back. I want it back. I shouldn't say demand because maybe that's too strong of a word. But he created this post on Truth Social. And the way that he worded this leads me to believe that he believes that his words here carry some sort of legal weight. He wrote, oh, great. It has just been learned that the FBI in its now famous raid of Mar-a-Lago took boxes of privileged attorney client material and also executive privileged material, which they knowingly should not have taken. By copy of this truth, I respectfully request that these documents be immediately returned to the location from which they were taken. Thank you. Hmm, isn't it really frustrating when somebody takes something that doesn't belong to them and then they refuse to bring it back? Maybe Trump should try to subpoena them through uh, Truth Social. I mean, I, I don't know what to say about that. First of all, that post holds no legal weight whatsoever. It doesn't matter that you're a former president. Second of all, if there's something pertaining to uh, national security in your writings or in your correspondence between your lawyers, they don't give a fuck. Like, they genuinely do not care, especially if you've taken nuclear documents. They do not care at all. That's meaningless to them. They're going to take what they believe is going to assist them in this investigation. So it's funny that he has the nerve to pretend as if they should bring this back to them. Be lucky that you're not in jail. I mean, Again, it, like it, it can never be lost on us, the fact that this man genuinely believes that he is above the law. And look, he may get away with this. He may not actually be held legally accountable. He may never see a day in prison in his entire life. But I mean, just the, the sheer hubris here and the entitlement, it's just insane. Now, because he has been a complete crybaby, because you have members of the uh, corporate right-wing media fear-mongering about how this is now a new low for America, and this is dictator level. Um, well, of course, expectedly, there's now violence because of this rhetoric. As Peter Wade of the Rolling Stone writes, the FBI is experiencing an unprecedented number of threats against its agents and personnel after the agency searched former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort and removed a trove of sensitive documents CNN reported. FBI and Homeland Security emphasized extremists' growing threats to law enforcement in a joint bulletin published Sunday by CBS. The bulletin went on to add that the FBI and DHS have observed an increase in violent threats posted on social media against federal officials and facilities 
facilities, including a threat to place a so-called dirty bomb in front of FBI headquarters and issuing general calls for civil war and armed rebellion. Those threats are specific in identifying proposed targets, tactics, or weaponry, it said. The bulletin also mentioned people have doxed agents by revealing their personal information online. FBI and DHS have observed the personal identifying information of possible targets of violence, such as home addresses and identification of family members, disseminated online as additional targets. Late last week, conservative outlet Breitbart obtained and published a search warrant containing the names of two FBI agents involved in the search, potentially putting them in danger. FBI offices are also targets. Last week, an individual who was at the Capitol on January 6th, Ricky Schiffer Jr., attempted to break into the FBI Cincinnati headquarters. On Saturday, armed protesters gathered outside FBI offices in Phoenix, Arizona. Wow. So these folks are absolutely brazen. They're tried and true, back the blue folks, but the second law enforcement does something that they don't want, goes after someone for once that's on their side, well, all of a sudden, they don't just become full abolitionists. They actually threaten violence. They are just truly unhinged and insane. And this is a political movement that Donald Trump has created. It's not like right-wing violence it did not exist before Donald Trump. I just want to put that out there. But Donald Trump certainly has become the leaderhead of this fascist movement in the United States that is violently fascist. It's not just a proto-fascist movement. This is a violent fascist movement. Now, Donald Trump has an interest in not seeing another January 6th because in the event they stormed the FBI or did something horrible and people got hurt or killed potentially, this would hurt his chances. January 6th already hurt his chances for 2024. So if his supporters did something violent again, I mean, that could be the straw that broke the camel's back, assuming that January 6th was not the straw that broke the camel's back. And I mean, seems like it kind of wasn't, but we don't know. Either way, Trump decided to condemn this in an interview with Fox Digital. And as you're going to see, he spoke from both sides of his mouth. He said, the country is in a very dangerous position. There is tremendous anger like I've never seen before over all of the scams and this new one, years of scams and witch hunts. And now this. There has never been a time like this where law enforcement has been used to break into the house of a former president of the United States and there is tremendous anger in the country at a level that has never been seen before other than during very perilous times. People are so angry at what is taking place. Whatever we can do to help because the temperature has to be brought down in the country. If it isn't, terrible things are going to happen. The people of this country are not going to stand for another scam. So... He's clearly talking out of both sides of his mouth here, and he offered to help the Justice Department bring down the temperature somehow. I don't know why you need to collaborate with them to bring down the temperature. You can do that unilaterally by just saying, hey, folks, you know what? Maybe I overreacted. Perhaps what I did was illegal. I'm going to take some personal accountability, some personal responsibility here and just admit that maybe I shouldn't have done this. Perhaps I don't agree with what, what the FBI did to me, but, you know, I played my role, too. But he's not going to do that. He's going to continue to portray himself as the victim, call it a scam, as he did with the 2020 election, and then things will continue to escalate in this country as they always do. But the reason why he's even paying lip service to the idea that his supporters are becoming a threat to law enforcement is because, again, he wants some sort of plausible deniability in the event this turns into a January 6th or somebody gets seriously hurt or killed. So, you know, somebody was already killed the individual who went into the FBI. But how bad is this going to get? I mean, it depends on the level of hysteria that we see from Donald Trump and his propagandists and his sycophants in mainstream media. But the thing is that, you know, as we learn more, they could look dumber. I mean, if this is really a situation where nuclear documents were taken, how could you possibly defend that? I mean, we will see defenses of it, but it's going to get increasingly difficult to convince the American people that he definitely needed to have this highly classified nuclear material, potentially, if it comes to that, that he could, you know, potentially give to Saudi Arabia or one of his international allies that, you know, scratched his back during his administration. And perhaps this is him scratching their back. It's hard to say what's going to happen, but he's right about the fact that very terrible things are going to happen, but he can control that. His supporters listen to him. So if he unequivocally condemns violence and tells his supporters to back down, they will listen. But if he doesn't, you have to assume it's because he wants 
violence because violence done as at his behest could benefit him. But I think he probably knows it will hurt him more than anything when it comes to the next presidential election. So he's trying to play both sides here when in the end, if he just shuts the fuck up and goes away, he could prove that he actually is serious about wanting to cool the temperature. But we all know that that's not what Donald Trump is going to do. So, yeah. I'm going to come. Do not come. 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 Welcome to the Come Zone. Come. 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 Come.